Hey, this is Dr. K from I Medical School, and today we're going to talk about giant cell arteritis, otherwise known as temporal arteritis. Let's get started by talking about what is giant cell arteritis. Giant cell arteritis is an inflammatory disorder of the medium to large sized arteries within the body. This vasculitis, which is a term for vessel inflammation, tends to affect elderly patients. Giant cell arteritis typically affects the cranial arterial branches from the aorta. The reason that giant cell arteritis is a must-know diagnosis is that if it is untreated, it can lead to permanent vision loss. Patients typically present who are older than 50 years old with a drastic change in vision, new headache, fever, low blood count, otherwise known as hemoglobin, pain with chewing and jaw movement, and muscle pain. Anyone who is greater than 50 years old with any of these symptoms should be suspected for giant cell arteritis. Normally, the first step in managing any disease is to first diagnose it before treatment. However, giant cell arteritis carries such drastic consequences, if not treated in time, that if there is a high clinical suspicion for giant cell arteritis, corticosteroids should be started prior to any confirmatory testing. The starting dose of prednisone is usually 40 to 60 milligrams per day for generally two to four weeks based on symptoms and repeat lab testing. Once a patient has been started on steroids, then it's time to confirm the diagnosis. With patients who have a high clinical suspicion for giant cell arteritis, they should undergo a temporal artery biopsy to look for signs of vasculitis. Now, why do we pick the temporal artery? Well, it's not just because giant cell arteritis tends to affect the temporal artery, but also because it is the most accessible medium-sized artery that we can biopsy without significant surgery. Keep in mind, there are forms of giant cell arteritis that do not affect the temporal artery. So a temporal artery biopsy may be negative for significant inflammation. In addition to obtaining biopsy specimens, imaging is very important in this disease. Imaging studies that will help identify the distribution of inflammation in the medium to large arteries of the body include an MRI angiography, which is generally the preferred study. Now, there's a strong relationship between developing temporal arteritis if someone has polymyalgia rheumatica. Polymyalgia rheumatica is an inflammatory disorder that causes muscle pains in the neck, shoulders, arms, and hips. All patients with polymyalgia rheumatica should be questioned to see if they have symptoms indicative of giant cell arteritis given their higher risk. In addition to steroids as treatment for giant cell arteritis, these patients should also be given a low-dose aspirin every day. The low-dose aspirin can help prevent embolic events associated with, the, with the arterial inflammation. Glucocorticoid tapering can begin once the disease has been controlled adequately. The usual practice is to begin tapering a patient's glucocorticoids after two to four weeks at the starting dose of prednisone. Well, that was a brief review of giant cell arteritis. If you like this video, give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, place them down below. Share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and anywhere else. Most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K, and I'll see you next time.